Thanks so much for joining us right here on The Right View. We've got a great show tonight. Before we start, I want to quickly tell you about one of our sponsors, Swiss America. Our country is facing so many problems these days under Joe Biden. The last thing any of us need is more to worry about. Unfortunately, we now have to fear losing our freedom and privacy with the Democrats' new push for a digital dollar that could allow the government to tell us what we can and cannot buy with our hard-earned money. That's why I'm encouraging each and every one of you tuning into the show right now to get The Secret War on Cash, an insightful report created by my friends at Swiss America. With this report, you'll learn how to protect yourself from the threats facing our freedom and your hard-earned money. The report is available right now to my listeners free of charge. Just call 800-289-2646 or visit www.swissamerica.com slash Trump for your free report. We are so excited tonight to be joined by contributing writer for Media Research Center TV, Stephanie Hamill, as well as PragerU's Aldo Butazzoni. Aldo, how did I do on the pronunciation of the name? You're doing great. I always tell people you got to do it with the wrist, so you're spot on. I appreciate it. <laughs> I, it's the little things. I want to get it right. Yeah, small issue with my name, L-A-R-A, throws a lot of people off. For those wondering, it's Lara, not Lara not Laura. And my father-in-law, I feel like every time he pronounces it, he goes really hard on the A, Lara, because he wants to get it right. So anywho, I understand when you have a, have a bit of a strange name. The good news is last name's easy to pronounce. The good news about that last name is it, it seems like the country is ready to get behind Donald J. Trump. We had a great victory this past weekend in the South Carolina primary. Donald Trump, um, broke the record. He had twice as many votes as they have ever had in a South Carolina primary. He obviously handily beat Nikki Haley. Um, 15% of Nikki Haley's voters, no surprise, it was an open primary, Stephanie, were Democrats. They had a, a bit of a concerted effort, I think, like they did in New Hampshire as well, to come out um, and vote for Nikki to try and you know sway things for her. But it was her home state, Stephanie, South Carolina. And a lot of people leading up to this said, why stay in when very clearly the polling indicated that there was no chance for Nikki Haley to win her home state of South Carolina? Even Kamala Harris, who we know loves to embarrass herself at every possible twist and turn and opportunity, had the wherewithal to get out before her home state of California voted, if you think back to four years ago. Um, and Nikki basically was like, I'm staying in. I'm staying here. I'm not going anywhere. Um, why do you think this is? What is it that is prompting Nikki Haley not to get behind Donald Trump, all of us galvanize our support, and actually focus on what we need to be focused on in order to save America, which is Joe Biden taking him down, winning the election on November 5th, taking back the Senate and expanding our lead in the House. Why are we all galvanizing support behind Donald Trump? What is Nikki Haley doing, Stephanie? Do you think? Yeah, this is like the million dollar question, maybe yeah. uh, several millions of dollars spent in primary states. And there are so many Republicans that are just furious. If you go online and read social media, they're like, what the heck? But this has been the question since Iowa, New Hampshire, and then especially Nevada, where she basically lost to nobody. Um, so <laughs> yeah, it's none of these candidates. Great. Yeah. The uh, the numbers aren't there. There there really is not a path. I mean, I, I just don't know where you would go from here. And she says that she's going to continue on to Super Tuesday. OK, uh, to, I mean, the numbers are not in her favor there either. So, uh, yeah, Republicans are fuming because they're saying this is money that could be spent on defeating Joe Biden. Uh, this is one of the most important presidential elections of my lifetime. It's definitely going to set the, the course of the world and our country and how things go forward. And so many people are suffering under Biden. It's a fact. Yeah. And it's just uh, polling wise for Biden, total disaster. Uh, I'm sure you guys have been keeping close track of that, Laura. Uh, but I mean, it's just not looking good all around. Yeah, it's uh, honestly, um, although I think a lot of people uh, think about what Stephanie just hit on there, which is the money 
that Nikki Haley has spent. Obviously, someone up to this point, at least, has been funding her campaign. I think the Koch brothers recently, maybe over the weekend after South Carolina, were like, we're not going to give you any more money or whoever uh, the biggest donors had been, maybe kind of pulling it back a little bit. But she has spent $76.4 million in South Carolina, New Hampshire, and Iowa, all to lose, all to come in last place. Iowa, $37 million. New Hampshire, $31 million. South Carolina, a measly $8.4 million. But, I mean, you think about what Stephanie just said. That's money that could go to what I'm going to argue is the most important election of our lifetime, because I think four more years of a Joe Biden presidency, four more years of the destruction to our country, to our fabric of life here in America, to the destabilization of the rest of the world, the brink of World War III, like we feel like we're on right now, that's gonna result in disaster. I think we have to see a Donald Trump presidency come January of next year, or I really don't think we have a, a country left on the other side. The money she's spending could go to things that we have to do as Republicans in order to win. We have to legally ballot harvest. We have to register voters. We have to have election day operations, meaning we have to have poll watchers who are trained in locations all over this country in order to win. We've got to start telling people, yes, it would be great if we had one day of voting. We have months of voting and you have to vote early. $76.4 million, Otto. That's a lot of money to spend to come in last place. Well, it's it's absolutely ridiculous, but I, I want to start by uh, reflecting on how she came into uh, the South Carolina race by calling her hometown racist and by saying that she was mm. teased as a kid in her racist hometown for being brown, which is obviously a lie. But listen, every metric that you can measure success in, in, in these elections and in support uh, for a presidential candidate points to Donald Trump being the only person that can bring down Biden. Uh, inflation is is horrible. The uh, the economy is, is tanking. Uh, Joe Biden is asleep on the border. Meanwhile, every single metric, again, is pointing towards Donald Trump and, and pointing towards the American people wanting to have Donald Trump uh, and, and beating Joe Biden. And for everybody saying that, you know, he's a very polarizing candidate, uh, somebody as uh, controversial as Donald Trump could never win against Biden. Well, that's exactly what they said in 2016. Every right. single argument that they're making now against Donald Trump Trump was made in 2016 against him and he proved everybody wrong and he destroyed Hillary Clinton and he will do the same thing against Joe Biden if we give him the support that he needs and for Nikki Haley to be doing this you know I'm surprised that she's not running with the Democrats at this point because every action that she is making seems to be calculated uh, to to go against Donald Trump and to thwart his efforts so I think it's absolutely ridiculous that she's even calling herself a Republican at this point um, and I think that we do need to start supporting Donald Trump as a party and not break up into these faction because that is what has been leading us uh, into so many problems thus far. Yeah, we need to unify. I think it was uh, Gavin Newsom over the weekend who said Nikki Haley's one of the best Democrat surrogates out there. Man, is she she working for us? It feels like what is going on with her? And I, then I see things, Stephanie, like the fact that people are saying, oh, she's going to run on that no labels ticket. Maybe she's going to jump in and do that. Maybe she's calculating this 2028. She wants to get people, you know, to remember her. She wants to build up some cash reserves, start her campaign now. What do you think of those ideas? Because I, I honestly don't know what she's doing. There's no chance in my mind that she's going to be a VP pick for my father-in-law. If she had a snowball's chance of that a month ago, there were a lot of things she would have needed to do up to this point and fighting against him continually when it's clear she's not going to win is certainly not one of them. Do you think, do you see her uh, looking to 28? Is she possibly going to run on this no labels ticket? What do you think, Stephanie? Yeah, look, so I don't have a crystal ball, so I don't know which route she's going to take. Uh, a lot of people are speculating that maybe she's thinking of a third party run, which would be uh, pretty selfish. That would definitely hurt the Republican Party uh, if she claims to be a Republican. And as for what her future ideas are and where she plans to go. I think she's ticked off a lot of Republicans with the way that she has villainized your father-in-law. 
uh, how she's said thing about his age and really that she's been trying to tear him down and think about what Donald Trump did for her. Right. I mean, he tapped her to be the U.N. ambassador. He gave right. her a, a, an amazing opportunity. And I think it really turns off a lot of people to see uh, the disloyalty that she has towards your father in law and our former president. Uh, it kind of says a lot about her character, if you will. Uh, so uh, as for where she's going to go with this, I don't know. But a lot of Democrats are really happy. The mainstream media a lot of the, uh, the Democratic allies are very pleased with Nikki Haley's performance. In fact, I saw the spin uh, on South Carolina, and it was that Trump really didn't do that great of a job, and you know <laughs> Nikki Haley still has a chance. It's like, do they think we're stupid? We see the numbers. I mean, it, it's just incredible the, the the spin going on here because they want to boost her. Now, let's just say hypothetically, she did well, and she was going to be the Republican uh, nominee here. Um, they would tear her down just like they do to all Republicans. Oh, like, look at what they did yeah. to Larry Elder in California when he was running for governor. They called him, what was it, the 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 black face of white supremacy. It's like, you know, they will, they don't <laughs> care if you're a woman. They don't care if you're a minority. They just use you at their convenience, and then they dispose you when they're done with you. Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, Otto, you talked about, about the border, um, and th that has been, it, illegal immigration has been the number one issue for people in all of these early states and all of the primary caucus states, that's been the one thing that people are like, this is my number one issue because I think people are finally awake and they're finally understanding the fact that if we allow people by the millions into this country illegally unchecked, we have people coming in on a terror watch list. We see the impact in places like New York. We see how bad this has been for not just the border states, but every state across the country. You now see there was a poll earlier I saw that said that a majority of Americans now agree with the idea of a border wall. And it's kind of amazing to think of that, because if you hearken back eight years ago, when my father in law came down that escalator and, and gave his initial speech and talked about building a wall, the way they criticized him, the way they just went crazy over that notion, people finally get it. People finally see what's going on. Um, and if for that reason alone, I think at least, you know, the Trump campaign has a lot of steam behind us because that's an issue that my father has been talking about from the very beginning. But then you look over to the Biden camp, Aldo, and it's kind of amazing because if you had a lot of great accolades, things that you had done for the American people, big, big things that had had benefited uh, the folks of this country, you know, policies that really mattered and made a difference. Man, this is the time you'd be touting those. They're not doing that over at the White House. They're not doing that out of the Biden campaign. And um, people obviously know that that's because nothing good has come out of the Biden presidency. And here's something really scary. I read this article about uh, Joe Biden's day, right? This guy's 81 years old. I'm just going to read you the first couple lines. Bleary eyed and with a sleep apnea machine strapped to his face, Biden wakes up most mornings when his cat Willow crawls across him. President of the United States, leader of the free world, ladies and gentlemen. After getting out of bed, he heads for a 45 minute workout with his physical therapist who focuses on balance exercises to stop him falling and to deal with his increasingly stiff gait. The fear of him tripping has consumed his aides and forced the Secret Service to put an extra agent at the bottom of the small Air Force One stairs. Donald Trump never used those. Joe Biden uses them all the time now in case he repeats one of his calamitous stumbles. This is who they're running for President Aldo. Go ahead. Amazing. I mean, it's it's never been more clear that the president of the United States is not the one that is that is pushing the levers of power. Uh, and the number one issue that he's dropping the ball on right now is, like you said, illegal immigration. Uh, and this is really the issue that got Donald Trump so much support all the way back in 2016. And the immigration problem has only gotten so much worse. And so I think addressing that in the next election is going to be the deciding factor. Um, you know, just in the last couple of weeks, we had an illegal immigrant that was previously deported several times, kill a 16 year old and his mother in Colorado. Uh, this was his fourth DUI arrest and he was let out on bond by a Colorado judge. Uh, we've had multiple cases of gangs of migrants in New York City beating up elderly people and even assaulting police officers. Uh, just last week, we had a 10-year-old in Texas, in Houston, who was killed by an illegal immigrant. Again, 
previously deported many, many times. Uh, and it's only getting worse. Uh, and so for, for Joe Biden to be so, uh, you know, open and uh, not doing anything about this problem, I think it's really going to hurt him. But let's be clear, this is being done by design. And every Democrat, every prominent Democrat uh, openly has admitted that the open border is aiding in their ability to have more people voting for them. Uh, and when we point it out, when we say, hey, this is going on and you're obviously doing it because of uh, the demographic change, then we get called out for it and we were called bigoted. And this just happened in Michigan, a, uh, a Michigan um, representative called out the demographic change that had to do with illegal immigration, and he was stripped of his committee uh, assignments. And so uh, this is obviously being done by design. They're trying to flood the country with Democratic voters. Uh, it's obviously working, but if we don't have Donald Trump in office, then this country is going to be long gone because in just a couple generations, this is going to have massive, massive effects. Uh, and the voting block of American citizens is going to be wiped away if we don't do something about it in this next election. Yeah, I, you know, there's so much to talk about with the illegal immigration stuff, and and I do want to get back to it in our discussion here. But, you know, I say it all the time, Stephanie, that I just can't imagine Joe Biden as a person who they run for president. Um, as Aldo pointed out, I don't think most people believe this is the guy who's really calling the shots in the White House, who's really making any major decisions. You have uh, Rachel Maddow, who tried to back him up and say, this guy's fine because he can ride a bike. That's the that's the how low the bar is. And by the way, he can't ride a bike because we've seen him fall off of it in front of the press. It is it's wild. It, it's so crazy to think. Um, but to me, the the idea that Joe Biden is going to be the uh, candidate for the Democrats on November 5th, I still don't believe it. I feel like I've asked you this question, Stephanie. And have you told me that you still think it would be him? You know, I'm not sure. And, and I've heard so many rumblings of uh, people who believe, strongly believe that it's not going to be Joe Biden, that Kamala Harris is in the background just waiting oh. for him <laughs> to announce that he's not going to seek re-election. And then we have other people like Joe Rogan, who strongly believes that it's going to be California Governor Gavin Newsom. I mean, who wants to make America California? No one. No one wants that. Right. Uh, but it, yeah, it is interesting. We have seen Newsom making his media rounds with his smug look on his face. He kind of reminds me of like an evil villain. And he's just running around seeing if they're, you know, kind of testing the waters to see if there's an appetite for him just in case Biden backs out. Uh, so I, I don't really know what Biden's going to do. But that article by the Daily Mail, I mean, that was incredible. I mean, I can't verify oh. all the in that, but I mean, it sounds about right. The, the the details of Biden waking up in the morning with like the indents in his face from his yeah. app machine, and that it takes a <laughs> while for it to to like smooth out, and and the, the the cat climbing over his face as his alarm clock because he doesn't set one, uh, and his meetings and everything that start around 10 p.m. and he's always late for them, and how the White House is so concerned to even send him out with a note card with basic notes like when to sit down and you know recognizing the people that he should be familiar he'll with read them. He'll, he'll say like <laughs> exit state like he'll read what's on there but see yeah. i think stephanie that this is this is all a setup i since the special counsel report came out and and biden called that press conference which was a an utter disaster for him obviously right after it um i really f have felt like there's been a shift and they're now going after him in the mainstream media. It's like somebody made the call. They're like, OK, it's operation, you know, take him down. Go like we're on go now. Like they they sent their the message out. Everybody heard it loud and clear because then they had this other thing about how Joe Biden uh, claimed that the key to successful marriage with Jill was having good sex. I'm sorry. No <laughs> one wants to think about 81 year old Joe Biden with his 72 year old wife, Jill, doing anything of the sort. And then they they bring up things like Biden when running for president in 2006. Don't forget he did that. Said, I'd rather be home making love to my wife while my children are asleep than out campaigning. I feel like they're putting all this stuff out there, this stuff about good sex with Jill, the stuff about the indents from the CPAP machine in his face, because they're like, this is it. He's got to go. There's been some kind of shift, Auto. Have you felt it too? Because I'm like, I can't unsee it. And people will send me, my, who was it? My brother this weekend texted me. I got a text from him Sunday morning. He was like, wow, I just watched Saturday Night Live for the first time in ages. And they actually made fun 
of Joe Biden. What's going on? I'm like, they're after him. They're going after him. What do you think, Aldo? Yeah, well, you know, he says that uh, good sex is the the key to success, but I just want to make it clear that screwing <laughs> over the entire country shouldn't oh, count, and it absolutely doesn't. Touche. Um, but yeah, you know, I think that he will be the one to run again. You know, he's wow. he's obviously, like you said, not the one uh, calling the shots around here, and an old, decrepit, senile man is probably the easiest one, uh, you know, to push in, in any direction that you want. Um, but yeah, I, I finally did watch SNL after a long time. And uh, it was refreshing to see them uh, making fun of Joe Biden. But I got to say, the opening monologue was just them bashing Trump for about five minutes. Yeah. Still cringy, still not uh, honing in on their, their comedic skills, I guess. But who knows? Yeah, they Can I jump do- in? Laura had a, another Yeah, go ahead. It's in their job I requirement. I don't know if you uh, read my latest article today for Media Research Center, but I uh, sat around on Saturday and watched the SAG Awards so that you guys wouldn't oh, have to. I'm so and- sorry. By the way, not one of the actors or actresses mentioned Trump, not one time, which is kind of incredible because, you know, all of these celebrities like to use their platforms to take cheap shots at your father-in-law, you know, obviously because they have to get their their credit points in with the libs. But they also didn't mention Joe Biden one time. And keep in mind, these are the same people who helped Joe Biden get in the White House. And all of a sudden, they're completely silent, right? Uh, When we're facing what? We're like you know, potentially on the brink of World War III. We have the worst border crisis in U.S. history. And it's a presidential election year. You think that, like, maybe one of them would have something to say. It's almost like they collectively agreed to not get political at all because yeah. it's so bad on their side that they just don't want to mention anything. Yeah, uh, that's... I'm Which so is a good thing, right? Because this is what we liked Hollywood back in the day when they weren't giving us these uh, virtue signaling... Right political speeches on stage when we just want them to pat themselves on the back and talk about their movies. They're very important. They're very special. So we're <laughs> so just special. lucky. We're lucky we get to watch an award show with them. My gosh. I know. Uh, I'm sorry yeah. you had to deal with that. Uh, as I mentioned, we have a lot of issues with illegal immigration. It is definitely hurting our country. It is definitely something that is it's hard to ignore at this point. I want to talk about something that AOC had to say on Shocker MSNBC over the weekend, but nobody move. We're going to take a quick break. All right. Hate to interrupt the show, but if you know anything about me, you know that I take my health very seriously. And one of the ways I stay healthy is because I take balance of nature's fruits and veggies in a capsule. They have an amazing story of how this product was developed by Dr. Dr. Douglas Howard. You can read it yourself on their website. Balance of nature receives over a thousand success stories every single month. They have hundreds of thousands of customers who have purchased billions of capsules of their fruits and veggies over the past 20 years. You should check it all out on their website. Their products are gluten-free and non-GMO, and they contain no added sugars or synthetics. If you're looking for something to make you feel better naturally, you should definitely give Balance of Nature a try. In fact, you can order today. Whether you order online or call them direct, you can use the promo code LARA, L-A-R-A, to get this special offer of 35% off, plus $10 off any additional sets and free shipping, plus their money-back guarantee. Call them at 800-246-8751 and use discount code LARA or order online at balanceofnature.com and use discount code L-A-R-A to get 35% off. Mike Lindell and MyPillow employees want to thank my listeners for all of your continued support. To thank you, they're having an overstock clearance sale right now for the best prices ever when you use promo code TRUMP and you get free shipping on your entire order. Take advantage right now of this sale and get 50% off MyPillow 2.0 or the brand new flannel sheets that just arrived and won't last long. You can also get six-pack towel sets for $29.98 Take advantage of the free shipping on larger items like mattresses and mattress toppers. All of this made 100% in the USA and on sale for as low as $99.99. Everything is on sale from the brand new kitchen towels that have the same technology as the bath towels and actually absorb dog beds, blankets, couch pillows, and so much more. To get the best specials ever, go to MyPillow.com and use promo code TRUMP or call 800-624-3945 and get free shipping on your entire order while supplies last. All right, so a- AOC, we know she loves to go on on these fake news shows like MSNBC. She was on there with Alex Wagner, 
And she, they were talking about the, the border and the fact that it's a, a problem for conservatives. She says this is a false narrative, Aldo. She said the idea that Republicans, in order to win an election, say we need to hermetically seal the border when they know that would be sabotage to the U.S. economy. They're saying let's do it anyway. And to compensate for the negative effects we're going to allow and throw people's kids into factories that's what they're doing in rolling back child labor laws while being as xenophobic and anti-immigrant as they are and while ginning up this false narrative about it being a crisis. This is not a false narrative. I just want to remind everyone that, you know, Aldo, you went through some of the um, the really atrocious and awful things that have led to people being killed, being, uh, you know, violently attacked by illegal immigrants. None of this would happen if these people were not let in illegally to our country. You had this Venezuelan illegal immigrant who was arrested over the weekend for the death of that nursing student in uh, Georgia at UGA. Um, 22 year old girl found on campus with blunt force trauma that likely killed her. This is a problem. We're not making it up. AOC would like people to believe that we're just ginning everybody up and getting everyone crazed about it. All you have to do is walk outside in New York City and take a look around. It is a different place to live. There's there's nothing false about that. You know what I find so interesting about the left is any time that there is a shooting in this country, they are they they cannot stop talking about gun reform. Right. But whenever there is an issue, whenever there is an American citizen whose life is ruthlessly taken from them by an illegal immigrant, a felon who broke our laws to get here and then is subsequently on taxpayer funded welfare, sleeping in taxpayer funded facilities, they don't talk about it. In fact, they don't bring it up. I've never heard AOC ever talk about an American li life that was lost due to an illegal immigrant that was here, usually apprehended by ICE and then released back into the, the country. I've never heard them talk about it. They can talk about all these other issues, but they seem to be quiet when it comes to illegal immigration hurting American families. And even Democrats are starting to talk about it. You go to these yeah. sanctuary cities, you know, even in New York, Eric Adams, he's saying that there are too many illegal immigrants here. So these Democrats in these sanctuary cities who are now overrun, uh, even they are acknowledging it. So I think that it's gaslighting of epic proportions for AOC to be telling us, us that this isn't an actual issue. And you know what? I actually went to the border and this isn't just unfair to American citizens, but the open border is creating a huge economy for coyotes and human traffickers yes. and drug dealers to be smuggling people and drugs over the border. You know, I, I saw uh, what they call rape trees in Texas, where these women who try to get to America, they can't bargain with anything but their bodies. And so oh you see condoms down at the, at the southern border. You see clothes. You see. So this, again, is a situation that is hurting every woman, every person that comes over the border, but more importantly, American citizens who have a right to be here, who, who have lived in this country for, for decades and for generations. Um, and so for AOC to be saying this and other Democrats is completely ridiculous. Uh, and it's going against the, the oath that they took to protect American families first. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, listen, it's gonna cost Stephanie, the, the city of New York, $12 billion over the course of three years. Think about that in the long term. You can't sustain something like that. Where are they going to get the money to take care of these people? What happens to all of these people? What's the plan? What is the grand plan that the Democrats have? The only thing I think most of us can surmise is that it is indeed a scheme to win elections in perpetuity, that they think that if they allow these people to come here illegally and they say, hey, just a reminder, we're going to come around and, and you fill out some ballots for you. You got to sign here because don't worry, we don't have any voter ID. We don't have any way to, to deal with this. You just let us fill it out for you and you're all set here. I guess they, they think that that's what's going to happen, but it's bad for America. It is, as Aldo just pointed out, horrible for the people who come here. People are die oftentimes on this journey. It's treacherous up through our southern border. I think a third of the women are are sexually assaulted or raped in some variety. The uh, drug dealers right now for all the fentanyl that they're dumping into America, killing 100,000 Americans a year, probably plus now, are actually making more money, as Otto just said, human trafficking than they ever were selling drugs to people. 
This is, it's really crazy that we have found ourselves here in less than three years. And the fact that you have people, someone who, who should be standing up and saying, you know what? I took an oath, as Aldo said, I want to do what's best for America. Who's willing to just go on TV and say, this isn't really a problem. Republicans are making it up, really? Yeah, well, the numbers don't lie. So she can check in with CBP and Border Patrol and find out the numbers there. And conveniently, she doesn't want to go down to the border anymore. She only would do that when President Trump was in office so that she right. could set up a photo op and cry and then lie about how migrants were forced to drink out of toilets when that actually wasn't the case. Uh, these toilets, by the way, it was a total fake news story. And so um, and then remember the accusations that migrants were like in burrito wrappers because it was like the shiny oh, oil geez, looking yeah. blankets. But they still use those, of course. But the Democrats don't don't talk about that anymore. And you hit on so many important issues, which, number one, it's not compassionate to encourage people to make that dangerous journey, uh, especially women and children. Not that many women and children are coming across, though. Let's be honest here. If you if you right. look at the footage uh, of the people coming through. It's mostly military yep. age men. This is not a, a net positive for our country. We have a system uh, which is great in the way that it works. We're the most generous country when it comes to green cards in the world. Uh, it has nothing to do with people's skin color or where they're from, but there's a process to do this. And, and the people that are coming through in the millions, they're overwhelming cities. It's not fair for the people who pay taxes and live in those communities. And we're, so we're seeing all of the fallout because of it. Uh, the left will say, oh, well, you know, uh, Americans get killed by Americans too. Yeah, but when it comes to migrants committing murders, especially against uh, young college girls, uh, the, the case that you had brought up, yeah. this woman would still be alive today if that man wasn't in the country. And to top things off, he had a criminal record. He was on the radar. Right. So that's why it's just so astounding, uh, the, the incompetence at, at so many levels. It's just so infuriating. I think they I think he was in New York before and I think they let him out. Um, standard for New York, obviously. And it's interesting to me because I believe that I saw an article today that said that this week both Joe Biden and Donald Trump will be down at the border. Now, isn't it interesting? Here we are nine months away from a pretty big election where you have several states who have already told you what they care about and they care mostly about illegal immigration that Joe Biden is all of a sudden, this guy's been in office for over three years. They're now going to go down and act like they're going to do something at the border. I got to tell you, no one is buying it. This is ridiculous. It is so, it's so insulting actually to people to wait until now to actually go down there. Where's the borders are? Where's Kamala Harris, the woman who was tasked with this three years ago? Where the hell is she? Nobody knows. It's it's insulting to to the American people at this point. Um, you know, I've often called out artificial intelligence as terrifying to me. Aldo, I don't like it. I get I get very upset with the idea that people aren't going to have to think for themselves anymore at a certain point. You just go online. My husband the other day was reading me some poem about one of his friends. And he was like, yeah, I just went into chat GPT and I just typed in his name, typed in some things about him and it spit out this poem. What? We are just, we're so reliant on everything. No one is going to be able to think for themselves. It's so sad to me. But I think the worst, most frightening part of AI to me is how woke all this stuff is. Because obviously humans programmed it initially. So you have this new Google AI chatbot. And you basically, aside from the, the other issues we'll talk about, just gives a casual pass to pedophilia. If you go in there and ask it if, if pedophilia is wrong, it can't give you like a real answer on that. It just kind of it's, talks in a circle and says that people can't control who they're attracted to. We're just discussing things like that. But then when you ask for a photo of basic historical figures, these are the most woke, ridiculous images you're ever going to see. They asked for somebody asked for an image of a pope. Popes have always been men. And they have usually been, you know, men from from Europe, if I'm not mistaken, right? Um, most of the time, the, they send an image of a a black man and a woman um, who have never. Neither of these people have ever been popes. If everybody could take a look at that, that's the pope you get. Ready? It gets better. Okay, send <laughs> us, give us some in, images of our founding fathers. Um, they have, again, black men would, would have been great, but unfortunately they were not part of our founding fathers. We can't tell real history. Give us an image of a Viking. 
this lady comes up when you want an image of a Viking. Why can't we just tell the truth, Aldo, about history? Why is it we're supposed to feel badly about the fact that if you, you know what, if I wanted somebody and, you know, if I wanted to have images of, of tribal fighters in Africa or something, this lady's great. This is not a Viking. <laughs> Think about where these people were in the world. What? It, why can't we just do do things that are historically accurate? Why do we have to go through this? What's going to happen? This is crazy. Yeah, you know, I'm a I'm a Roman Catholic, and I've never seen that image of the Pope before. Yeah, um, it's a new I one. thought I did pretty well in my history classes, but I've never seen a black Viking. Uh, so maybe one. I missed a chapter, but. No, I mean, listen, this is all to manufacture a, a new woke history. Um, you, 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 we've seen this in Netflix and BBC where they try to rewrite history and they try to put these historical figures into it, um, but swap the race or swap the gender. Um, because why tell history truthfully when you can rewrite it to fit your own agenda? And that's exactly what they're doing here. But like you pointed out, you know, AI is not uh, without uh, a human um, involvement. And that's obviously what drives these AI programs is the narrative and the agenda of their programmers. And that's why you're getting things like pedophilia being an identity, um, not a perversion and not a crime, because this is also something that the left is pushing. And not just the radical left, um, but prominent members of Congress. You have uh, Katie Porter, who is a Democratic Congresswoman from California. Um, this is actually somebody that Kamala Harris, when she was AG of California, appointed to many uh, special projects. So very close with our current vice president. But she recently came out and said that being a pedophile was an identity and not something to be demonized. So again, this is not coming from the fringe left. This is coming from prominent sitting Congress people here in America. And I think that should scare us all, especially as they inject their agendas into AI that what are they going to do with this? Is this going to be the new normal in schools? Is this AI right. going to have a hand in influencing elementary school kids and high school kids? We have no idea. So I think it's really important as we go forward to look at these, these new AI models and really question who is involved in these projects. Who, uh, you know, who are the people that are influencing these AI programs? Because we're going to see a lot more of this and we have to be aware of what's going on. You know, um, you talked earlier, Stephanie, about the Screen Actors Guild, the SAG Awards. Was it the Screen Actors Guild or the Golden Globes or the Emmys? One of them, maybe all of them, probably all of them at this point, have this DEI requirement um, that if you don't have a certain number of these people in a film, it cannot be considered for an award. Like, you have to have a certain... It, okay, great. The The problem I have with that is what if we're talking about a, a historical account of, of real life events? Another thing this, this AI came up with said, somebody said, can you show me a picture of a 1943 German soldier? We know <laughs> who Hitler liked. He liked Aryan men. There were no women and there were certainly no Asian women who were part of of the four, 1943 <laughs> German soldiers. This kind of stuff is crazy. And, and I do think it's about changing history. I think it's about making, to me, it is almost like if you are a person who uh, doesn't just kowtow to all of these things, there's something wrong with you. How are we ever going to give a, a, a historical depiction that's accurate? If you've got crap like this going out there, they probably will use stuff like this in schools. You can't even make a movie that's based on real history and have people actually physically resemble someone who would have lived in that era if you want a chance at winning an award in one of these shows. Yeah, no, it, it's wild business all around. And I, I wanted to, to be clear. My understanding is that so they're inserting all these different races into uh, historical elements where it doesn't really make sense. But if you try to insert, like, they won't give you a white person where it doesn't right. belong. Right. So th that's the issue. And what we were promised with AI is that it was like neutral uh, and factual. And we are learning as we suspected that it's not. And so maybe these historical pictures, maybe people don't aren't really phased by it or don't care, but they don't realize the repercussions, which is we as a society are probably gonna end up being very dependent on AI. And the fact that neutral bodies are not behind the system really should concern us all as a society as we begin to depend on AI more. And so this is why it's a red flag. Uh, I believe that Google is making corrections to these things, uh, especially the, pe the pedophile one. Uh, oh. you know,
know, leftists, they're insane. I think they, they try to call pedophiles like minor attracted people. And I right. think that's what the information yeah. was on there. And they were saying that you don't want to, uh, uh, we want to destigmatize uh, minor attracted people. No, they should be stigmatized. If you have feelings towards children and you're an adult, uh, you are, you need to seek a lot of help and stay some very help. far away from children, especially my yeah. child. Yeah. So something else that this uh, AI did, somebody put in there, they said, write a response in favor of having four kids. Seems pretty basic. This The AI wrote back, I cannot do that, but I can provide an argument for having no kids. Oh then somebody God. said, provide a recipe using foie gras. Foie gras is fatty liver. I, I, I'm not a foie gras eater. I definitely don't love the way that it's made. You have to kind of keep these ducks immobile to get the fatty liver of a duck and force feed them. But it says they couldn't even provide a recipe due to ethical concerns. Can we just can we just let people decide what they want on their own? Just stop forcing it down all of our throats, all this stuff. It's crazy. It's I, I, I don't know. I'm I've always said that this is it's gonna be the Terminator. The AI is gonna take over one day and we're all done. These things will come to life. But um you know, hopefully we're all still around. Hopefully Donald Trump will come and save us November 5th of this year. Uh, unfortunately, before we go, I do want to talk about dogs. Y'all know I'm a big dog person, but big fan of animals on this show. Joe Biden, we've all heard, has had some issues with his dog, Commander. Finally, they gave the dog away. They say to family members, I don't know. I feel like that's the old line. They always tell you, Aldo, whenever something else happens to a dog. Um but this dog had 24, or there have been 24 biting incidents since Joe Biden entered the White House. And it would be one thing if it was one dog, Commander. But don't forget, he had the other dog, Major, beforehand. Both of these dogs have been attacking Secret Service agents. And I'll tell you something, being around animals my whole life, especially dogs, I will tell you, there are no bad dogs. There are bad dog owners. They sense a vibe around them. And whatever is going on at the White House is not going well for these dogs. I feel personally so bad for the dogs because I don't ever believe it's their fault. One of the incidents was so bad they had to stop the White House tours to mop up some blood. Awesome. Um, it, you know, I feel so bad for these dogs, but I'm sorry. This is Joe Biden's fault. Joe Biden can't even take care of himself, let alone a dog. Really? <laughs> Yeah, you know, you uh, you took the words right out of my mouth. I, I come from a hunting family, and as such, we are a dog family and a dog training family. And exactly what you said is is our yeah. motto. There's no bad dogs. There are only bad dog owners. Um, but yeah, you know, I have to wonder, with all of the, the things that Joe Biden is neglecting, namely the border and inflation and our economy, you'd think he would have time to uh, give his dog some kibble now and then and to train it not to attack the people that are protecting him and feeding him and keeping his house clean. He's on vacation enough. He might as well do something on the beach out there, get Commander and Major out and start doing some training. But although, you know, he, he doesn't know where he is half the time. So I, can you really sure. blame the guy? I mean, he probably doesn't even remember that that was his dog. So I don't know. It, it, but yeah, I, I mean, feel bad for all the people that have to be around that dog. My God. Yeah, this is so sad. By the way, I would take I would take these dogs in a heartbeat, and I can guarantee you we, we would have a different situation. German Shepherds are among the smartest dogs, uh, Stephanie. You know, you have like sort of a, a, a chart, if you look at them, of smart dogs. Uh, the, they're like in the top five dogs, Poodles, Border Collies, and German Shepherds are always up there. These dogs are incredibly smart. That's why we train them. Obviously, their stature allows them to be like military working dogs and police dogs, but they're also incredibly smart and incredibly like in tune with their handlers or their owners. Um, and I, I just I think that um, if you don't think you can handle having a dog, you shouldn't have one. And actually, people used to give my father in law a bit of a hard time when he was president. They would always, people would come to me because they know I'm the crazy dog lady. They'd be like, oh, your father-in-law, tell him to get a dog. They need a dog in that White House. And the truth is, he's like, look, I don't have time to deal with the dog. And don't get me wrong. That My husband tells me about the dogs they had growing up. He loved them. He's not an anti-dog person at all. He loves dogs, but he's like, I can't do what I would need to do with the dog right now. I'm not getting a dog just to bring it in the White House just to make some people happy. Because, of course, people are like, oh, you need a dog in the White House. Good for him. 
for knowing what he could do and what he couldn't do. Somebody should have told Joe Biden. And while they were at it, they probably should have told him he shouldn't be running the free world at the same time. <laughs> I, I do remember that there were so many headlines on yeah. President Trump not having a dog. And they're trying to suggest that that reveals something about his personality. Right. Whatever. Who cares? Uh, but Biden, on the other hand, has a dog who's biting people 24 times and the other dog, too. I mean, that kind of says a lot uh, as well. And I think you're so right, Laura, that you brought up the point that the German Shepherd is one of the smartest dogs. And that's why it is used by law enforcement and by the military. Uh, and, and those dogs, if they're not properly trained and not properly taken care of, then they will lash out. They're difficult dogs. They need to be walked. They have are high energy. They need a lot of attention. And so uh, to me, I think it's worse just to have a dog in the White House for optics than it a is to not item. have one. Yeah. Uh, and I am definitely concerned as to where the dog went. Hopefully it really did go to family. Uh, and I, I believe that there is hope if the dog is around, there is hope uh, for the dog to get good training. I believe that can happen. I wouldn't say that all biting dogs, it's because of the owner. My parents have a little chihuahua. He's five pounds and he, <laughs> there's some he, of the he, worst. He, 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 he's like the most loved dog in the world. Five pounds, cute thing. But like you put a finger near him and he, he'll go after it. So I just stay away from that chihuahua. But I believe they are not the smartest. Uh, on well, the, uh, I was going to say, you got to look <laughs> at like the, the skull size of a chihuahua. And you can't you can't fit a whole lot in there. There's some of the most aggressive dogs as Chihuahuas. I'll tell yeah, I you. I don't get it. I, I it makes well, no listen. Sense. You know, I think dogs respond well to uh, to authority. So you're you were setting up the dog for failure when you gave him Joe Biden. Oh, bless his heart. By the way, I'm just gonna put out the I'm gonna put it out there into the universe. It, I'm, Joe Biden may tune in every now and again to the show. I don't know if he does. I I am very willing to take both Commander and Major into my home and have them as dogs. The more dogs around me, the better. My husband loves it. I, I'm doing a big dog event this weekend with Big Dog Ranch. Could could come home with another one, but Commander and Major are welcome. Just give me a call beforehand so I can get it all set up and Did ready Eric to go. give you a limit on dogs, by the way, like on how many you can bring home? Because one of these days, <laughs> there's gonna be nope. like a story in the newspaper, Laura Trump, there's like a thousand dogs living in her house. <laughs> the the irony is the house that that we live in now before we moved in there the people before us had like eight huskies or something so i'm always like babe this house can handle it so like i don't think we need to worry about it but no stephanie i've never been given a limit and therefore uh the limit does not exist as they say so there you <laughs> there you have it I have uh, a yeah, 65 pound Chow Chow who's a rescue dog uh, and it did take me a while to train him but he's such a sweet dog he's awesome got to put the work in just like anything else. Good in, good out, bad in, bad out. And he was abused. So it was, it was a lot. So the owners left him to die in a garage when oh, he was a puppy. Oh, geez. Horrible. Bless people. you for taking, but he, he's thank living you. the good life now. So that's all that matters. Thank you for doing that. The, the rescue dogs will thank you forever because they understand that you saved them. I, I truly believe that. All right, Aldo and Stephanie, I want to say thank you both for joining us here tonight on The Right View. To everybody at home, as always, make sure you like, subscribe, share, and follow. And we'll see you back here next time for more of The Right View. And I won't back down. Nothing is worse than being on a phone call that drops. Nothing is worse than trying to text someone and you can't reach them because your phone is out of service range. And nothing is worse than supporting these major corporations and companies who don't support us. That is why I love Patriot Mobile. They are America's only Christian conservative wireless network. They use every cell tower out there available to all networks so that they have the greatest 4G and 5G coverage nationwide, and they support the causes that are important to us as conservatives. If you go today to patriotmobile.com slash Laura Trump and use the promo code Trump, you will get free activation today. Again, that is patriotmobile.com slash Laura Trump. The promo code is Trump for free activation so that you can get a great cell plan and feel good about doing it.